Although we can assume that this buck is following this doe, we never really know, and that's why I always say to start out with a contact run. The only way you're going to pull a buck off a live doe in this scenario at this time of year is to convince him that you're another buck in his territory that's breeding a doe below you. After hitting him with a couple contact grunts and seeing his reaction, seeing the hair go up on his back and seeing his ears pinned back, then I knew that I could go ahead and proceed with a little more risky call, a snort wheeze, to let him know that I'm going to challenge him. <laughs> After the second snort wheeze, you can tell that this deer definitely acknowledges I'm there but hasn't made a commitment to come over to me at all. In his mind, the next thought process that he has to have is to determine what deer I am. Because of that, you'll see him lick his nose and that licking of his nose is adding some moisture to his nose so he can help identify me by scent. Because I want this deer to acknowledge the fact that I'm not a youngster in the area, that I'm an aggressive mature deer, I'm going to hit him with a breeding grunt. That breeding grunt signifies that I am breeding a doe, and for the most part, does only select more mature bucks. The next step in this calling sequence is to reinforce or paint the picture that I am indeed a buck that's breeding a doe. In order to do that, I throw in my doe calls now. Shortly after those two bleats, you'll hear me hit a couple quick, almost contact sounding grunts. These are the similar grunts that you'll hear a buck make while he's chasing a doe. Again, just trying to paint a picture that there's breeding process going on that he's not a part of. Now, after completing that scenario, you can see him get extremely aggressive and turn back towards us again and start to rub a tree. This is when you know things are coming together very, very fast. Once you see a deer react like this and see him rubbing the brush, scraping the ground, and see him licking his nose again, you're, you can be very certain that you've got his attention and that's when you're a little more free to use the calls more so than what you normally would. This is the type of time where you can get really aggressive and really not harm yourself at all. It's really important to you to point out right now that because of the environment I'm in, there's so much cover that these deer typically will communicate a lot verbally. If we were in an open environment, that would be a totally different scenario. When the moment came when I finally broke this deer, you can see him get a lot more aggressive in closing the distance to us. Even though he's headed our direction, he's still a mature buck, which means he's still going to try to check us downwind. One thing you have to remember as you watch a deer like this walk in, a mature buck, especially coming in downwind of you, you want to pay attention to how much he's licking his nose because that is the determining factor of you deciding when the next time you'll call is. Meaning, if he comes down to you directly and stops licking, he's probably got a scent of either you or something he doesn't like. But when a deer's frantically licking his nose like this, he's desperately trying to identify which deer it is. And as long as he has no idea you're there, you're free to work the call almost as much as you need to at this level. One of the things you'll notice sometimes as a deer is approaching like this, he may turn, and if he turns, don't panic yet, especially if his ears are positioned back towards you. That means you still have his attention 100%. If a deer turns and swivels his ears in front of him and walks away from you, then you've got to make a decision. You either have to find a hole to shoot through in a hurry, or you're going to have to try another call. But whatever call it is, is going to have to be an aggressive one. Because this deer's ears are pinned back to me the entire time, there is absolutely no reason to panic. He is simply turning around to posture and to show a little bit more dominance by rubbing a tree again. 
In this scenario, the wind in our thermals is totally in our favor and we're on the edge of a bluff. So this deer has to come down and investigate. There's absolutely no way that you would see a hunt like this take place unless you had the ability to quickly adapt and change your vocalizations. The modest slide and the extinguisher is the only call that I know of that I can do that so accurately and so dependably. I don't promote stuff that I don't believe in, but this is one call that has worked for me. For nearly a decade, one calling system has consistently brought in more 200-inch bucks than any other. When your opportunity arises, what call will be hanging around your neck? With Extinguisher Game Call, we change the way that the industry looks at grunt calls. There is no comparison between this call and any other call in being able to reproduce the exact sounds to make a whitetail do what I need him to do. I don't think there's anything else anywhere near the performance level that this call can produce. With over 10 million deer hunters in this market, less than 1% of hunters will have an opportunity to own the extinguisher in black rack this season. One thing I can tell you for sure, this system will change the way you hunt.